What's going on guys? Instagram live. Gonna wait for some people to uh, come on board here. Normally I announce this through my Facebook and a couple other places. Getting some fresh air in here. Uh, just vacuumed and mopped. And uh, once we get a couple people in here uh, on Instagram, I'll give you guys a little update, a little story about why I vacuumed the gym, why I mopped the gym. Um, and maybe some plans to change that. What's going on guys? TJ, what's happening? Gabriel in the house, my man. Thanks to all you guys for showing up. Real nice day out here, about 60 degrees today. 60 degrees today, <clears throat> we don't get it. So I just vacuumed, uh, mopped, cleaned up really good. Jim is smelling good, Jim is looking good. And um, I went outside, there's an Acme next to us, and there's usually 100 to 200 guys out there uh, waiting for work, just standing around waiting for work, Monday through Sunday. And um, I went out there and I saw three guys. One of them was a younger guy, early 20s, and then the other guys were definitely older. I mean, they may have looked older than what they were, but I'm definitely saying, 40s. I said, hey guys, who wants to vacuum for an hour? 20 bucks. $20 for an hour. Fucking dude says to me, nah man, 50 bucks. At least 50 bucks. I almost punched him in the face. I went back in here and I said, whew, why am I letting, why am I offering an opportunity to the delusional people? I hate to say it, but usually Americans are the lazy ones. But man, that mother effer out there threw me for a loop, for a good one, and he was serious. And I said, you just fucked it up for every dude out here. I will never walk out here again and offer you an opportunity to make money through work. From now on, and we'll see if this actually works, I will ask the athletes here. Come in, one guy vacuums, one guy mops, one guy cleans down all the dumbbell racks. If you've got a warehouse gym, you know that dust collects in these places pretty quickly. That being said, it brought me back to this memory. I was 19 or 20 and uh, midway through college and I was working for a friend's uh, future father-in-law's construction company. Guy was uh, Polish, uh, from Poland, spoke Polish, very tough guy, worked with his hands, self-made man. And uh, I worked for his construction company, mixing cement, carrying bricks, just doing all the carrying and hauling um, so the guys could lift for the bricklayers. And uh, one of the guys that worked with us was a veterinarian from Poland. That's right, a veterinarian. This guy, you know, is a uh, animal doctor and uh, no work for him. This is 95, 96, no work for him in Poland. He comes over and he's fucking laying bricks, mixing cement, doing manual labor. And here we got guys sipping on their cup of coffee in the nice sun. And no, they're too good to work for 20 bucks an hour. Last time I checked, that's pretty damn good. Um, when the world, when the economy, work, <laughs> you know, I'm not an economist, but you hear the money people saying, we are due for another economic crash soon. It's almost 2018. The last one I think was like 08, 09. And those days are coming. The people who are you know, too good or they are above working, they will be screwed. And I, I put out a video on the other uh, Instagram, the Underground Strength Gym, talking about how many jobs have you had. We have a lot of athletes, obviously, that follow us and their parents. But I'm shocked with how many kids have never had a job at age 16, 17, and they own a car. Or kids that as soon as they get a little bit busy, it's like they don't train. They could only do one thing. Well, listen, when you grow up and you, maybe you're a family man, family woman, you've got a lot of things to do, like laundry, like cleaning, like upkeep of the house, like paying the bills, like taking care of your kids, taking care of your own health, uh, putting food on the table. You're going to have 20 things to do at once. And sure, you could half-ass it, you could suck. There's plenty of people out there that suck when they get older and they don't care if they're giving their 
kids good or great. They're fine with giving them good enough. And as I always say, good enough is the death of greatness. But for crying out loud, fight for something, people. Stand up, take a stand, you know, stand for something or fall for anything. I understand this is not politically correct wording and a little speech and a little rant going on here. I understand if I said this and, and I was maybe in the schools, I would get fired. But this is what needs to be said. The kid who shows up late all the time, the kid who doesn't eat breakfast because he has to sleep that extra five minutes, the kid that just doesn't, you know, kids who are 14, 15, 16, who are half assers, who never got punched in the face, literally and figuratively, they become 26, 36, 46, 56, and the only thing that's changed is they've gotten older. They're still emotionally weak, they're still half-assing it, and that's why <clears throat> things have to change. They must be broken down to break through. They must be broken down and rebuilt the same way that we um, build you know, samurai swords. We you know, put it in, in, in the uh, hot fire, then we beat it with a hammer, then we drown it in the freezing cold water, then we beat it again to reshape it. That is what the human body and mind must go through for you to evolve. And look, even as a parent myself, sometimes I find myself protecting, and you know what? Sometimes it's good for everybody to get punched in the face. That's it. Let's get some questions, guys. Uh, Rich Rivera says, my pops taught me, you'll dig a ditch of, you'll dig a ditch of that's what it takes to support you and your family. Yes, you will. That's awesome. And that's the truth. If I need to start a lawn care company, a washing car company, my man Vince knows he's, he's got his uh, lawn care company. It's about getting your hands dirty and doing work and people fear it. And I just look around at the gym and that's why I have this these quotes up on the wall to remind the kids, you know, this is life, okay? I wish there was easy days, but there are not. I wish you could just sit around and play video games and be a hammer, but it is not the case. He is best who is trained in the severest school. That's it. I'm a coach of training, bro. You can help me to work there. Iron, bike, I'm not sure what the name is. You can help yourself. <laughs> That's how people help people. I got an email the other day. Who knows? Maybe it was from you. And it was another cut and paste email from somebody saying, I would like a job. I've never met you before. You, the email didn't even say, hi, Zach. It was a blatant cut and paste. And it's like, ah, lazy, lazy, lazy. God damn lazy. It makes me sick. Stop being lazy, be a frickin' workhorse, stop expecting people to hand you shit. You don't get what you want, you get what you earn. Justin, what's happening, my man? You better be crushing it out at Michigan, my friend. If you need a hand, use your other, that's right. Who's got questions, guys? Chris, what's up, my friend? Anybody, anybody got questions? Say the word, who's got questions? Get, got into a little rant there about not being lazy. Tony Lee, thanks for the support, my man. Give me, give me, give me. No way. I ain't giving anybody jack shit. Marky Mark, what's happening? That's what the underground has been about. That's what Strong Life Academy has been about. And that's what it always will be about. There's no give. There's earn it. And in this strange-ass world, I had a great conversation with a friend yesterday who... Um, trains athletes and he said hey man i hate to break it to you but if you're in an area where the parents aren't go-getters where the parents are not hard chargers you know if the parents don't value hard work discipline dedication and being a great athlete because they know that being a great athlete that work ethic will carry over to life he goes your gym is going to struggle he goes you got to get to a, a better area that's the truth you got it, Wes. Thanks for sending me your messages. Wes, Underground Strength Coach. Wes, let's get you inside the Underground Strength Academy, my man. Hit me up with an email. We've got a uh, VIP discount link for uh, Certified Underground Strength Coaches, $9.95 a month. <clears throat> Nick, what's up, buddy? Well, Jeff Nichols is the man. You can't argue with that guy. Can't argue with that guy because fucking dude knows 
just like, hey man, uh, he became a SEAL. <laughs> There's no accidental Navy SEAL. And I love, I listen to Jeff when he does his lives. I love everybody's asking, give me, give me. He tells everybody, shut up. Here's the program, do it, do it. He goes, this is the physical program, but mentally, the only way you're going to make it through any of these uh, special ops uh, military units is if you are your, your mentality, you have this such deep burning desire that no chains, no chains can hold you down. The only thing that can hold you down is yourself. All right, guys, <clears throat> who's got some training questions? Because as much as I rant, I want to unleash some truth bombs on training. CrossFit Twinsburg, what's happening? Ross V, thanks for jumping in. The Gong Show. <laughs> Very good. Oh, missed your question. I'm 30 and I play men's league ice hockey. I'm usually crushed for a few days afterwards. Any advice? We train a guy here. <clears throat> I think he's 37. He works. Then he shows up here around 5.30, 6 o'clock. Trains for about 45 minutes, maybe a little less. Then he goes jujitsu one night, ice hockey the other night. He's been doing that since I met him four years ago. And uh, you don't want to kill yourself in the training. But what I suggest is you get stronger. You get in better shape. That way you're not beat up from playing ice hockey. So start doing some sled drags. Start doing some farmer walks, some rack walks, push-ups, pull-ups, lunges. Do basic stuff and take it from there. I'm trying to think if you wanted, you know, a beginner program, get the Encyclopedia of Underground Strength and start taking the beginner programs out of that book. Then when you start getting serious about things, that's when you go to Gladiator Strong. It's a three day a week program and I always hop on that forum to help people adjust the volume. But if you're getting beat up for a few days after a night of ice hockey, no good. Maybe a day of being sore, but more than that means you must get in better shape. How many times a week to do long runs while on a hypertrophy program? Well, if you're trying to get big and jacked, you're probably not gonna wanna do too many long runs. Maybe you could take, I don't think doing a 5K once a week is gonna kill you. I don't care what the you know, muscle building magazines say. And then maybe one day a week, <clears throat> you hit some sprint work. Um, hill sprints, short distance, or um, sprint repeats on a track or you know, telephone pole to telephone pole because that's gonna be excellent for putting muscle on the legs. You're also gonna notice your abs and lats get quite sore when you do a lot of sprint work because your body is utilizing everything. It's not just you know, a uh, anaerobic exercise, lower body focus, it's everything. So I think it's okay to go ahead and hit some one, one run a week that's a two or three mile run tell you what guys when I was in my early 20s when I was putting on serious size and strength I would hit my regular workout and then I would do 20 to 25 minutes of interval training so it might be a stairmaster or I would go on a uh, incline treadmill and I would maybe power walk for two to three minutes run for two to three minutes and I would do that you know for a total of 22 25 minutes felt great and I think it helped me put on the muscle it did not slow me down at all. <clears throat> Tony says, I'm stuck with a hotel gym for the month of December. Would I be able to still do Gladiator Strong with limited equipment? Probably not because we do a lot of barbell work unless you have a barbell. Um, but I would say maybe do the, uh, if you go on uh, Underground Strength Academy, which is undergroundstrengthcoach.com, use the kettlebell bodyweight hybrid program. And you could do those kettlebell exercises with dumbbells. Sprints with short periods or long rest periods, it depends. You know, if you want to, uh, I like to do incomplete recovery, but if you were an actual sprinter, then we would do long recovery so that your exertion is full out. And then once we see that your time is dropping, we eliminate sprints altogether. But Nick, you're get, trying to just get jacked. So let's say you do a, a 200 meter sprint. And let's just say for the sake of it, it takes you 30 seconds. Maybe you rest you know, one, one minute, maybe even 90 seconds, but you do that for 10 rounds, seven rounds, something like that. Um, I don't get too caught up in the minutia of things. I like to go by how I feel and go slightly before I'm actually ready. 
That keeps the mental edge in check. Let's take one more training question, guys. <clears throat> I really appreciate the questions. Let's see if I missed any questions here. Iron Warehouse, thanks. You're a big inspiration, motivation. Appreciate that, my friend. All right, guys, let's take a final question. All right, looks like we don't have any more questions. The only thing I can leave you guys with is work as hard as you want to win. Oh, last question. How would you prepare a competitive jiu-jitsu athlete for a huge tournament like Worlds where there could be up to eight matches? Cisco, <coughs> we train uh, Vitor Shaolin, and uh, he's in the Scotch Plains location, and uh, he's done... Uh, I don't know how, if he, I think he was always in super matches, but he basically trained one day a week with us because his jujitsu and also being in his late 30s, I believe he's 37, 38, served as his strength work. So we did our one day of full body strength work with him. But what I would do also is if you know you're going to have three, four matches in a day, as that approaches, like the Russian wrestlers did, they probably still do this. They would build their, their training program into that. So if they knew they had a tournament where there would be four matches in a day, they would organize training where they wrestle a match at 8 a.m., um, 10 a.m., 12 noon. Then they would go and have the lunch just like the tournament. Then they would go back and, and get ready for the 2 o'clock. So you want to try to prep your body so it's not in shock for that. But let's say you have a full-time job and you can't do those things then you've got to listen to your body and I would say probably two short strength and power type sessions. Um, and you know, I have so many workouts posted out there on wrestling and jujitsu and MMA. Dig into them <clears throat> and give them a feel. See where you're lagging and, and kind of assess your own body and mind where it's at. Like, are you getting tapped in certain positions? at a certain time during the match? Are you feeling exhausted? Um, are, you, are you winded? Is it your grip that's giving out? Attack those weak areas and your, your specific training is your jujitsu. Do a lot of speed drilling. I think that's amazing for you know true sports specific conditioning because you're getting winded and you're pushing for the technique. Uh, Jonathan asks, what's the best way to split heavy lifting? in the week using squat and deadlift. You know, if you look at the west side method that's worked well, is the heavy squat and speed deadlift after heavy squats. You can do them as two separate uh, workouts, at least 72, if not four days between those, those lifts. All right, guys, that's it. Have an awesome day, own the day. And this rant will go up on my YouTube. Can't post it on Facebook because um, I am banned on Facebook because of the music the music in the background here at the gym, which I never plan on stopping. Peace, guys. Much respect.